What's happening, guys? Keith here with your September 23rd edition of the Impact Report. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notify bell. If you haven't checked out my review of this past week's episode of Impact, you can do so by clicking the link at the top of the screen. And speaking of this past week's episode of Impact, it drew 229,000 viewers and ranked 133 on Cable's Top 150. This is unfortunately down 11% from last week's 258,000 viewers. Moving over to YouTube, number three on most viewed videos from this past week's episode of Impact, Austin Aries vs. El Tejano, the Impact World Championship. This had 41,000 views. Number two, Sammy Callahan and OVE vs. Laredo Kid, Aerostar, and Hijo Del Vikingo. That had 45,000. And far and away, number one, Johnny Impact gets the drop on Austin Aries, and that had 95,000 views. Um, there was a lot of videos that had views similar to the 41,000, the number three video, a lot in the upper 30s to low 40s. So it seemed like that was the common number for this week, but high and away is Austin Aries and Johnny Impact, which makes sense because that is the world title picture. Um, so there was a lot of talk recently about Phoenix and Pentagon going to WWE. However, that looks like it will not be happening. PWInsider.com has confirmed that over Impact's visit to Mexico City for the TV tapings, the brothers, with the help of Conan, entered into negotiations with Impact Wrestling for a new agreement on dates for next year that would likely see the pair get a raise, which given their push in Impact, is deserved. Uh, Phoenix and Pentagon have also committed to a series of dates for MLW through the end of 2019, something Court Bauer commented on his Twitter yesterday that he moved heaven and earth to make that happen. So good news there. I'm glad Phoenix and Pentagon will be sticking around Impact. Um, them going to WWE really didn't make much sense. So Earlier in the week, on the last edition of the Impact Report, I talked about some upcoming events for Impact Wrestling. Uh, they will be partnering with Big Time Wrestling once again on November 30th in Newark, California to bring you Gold Rush. It is advertised as a live on Twitch event. However, no time for the event has been announced. Uh, tickets go on sale October 1st at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. But before we get to Gold Rush, we have the Chris Jericho Cruise. Still unsure if any of these matches will be taped, but they have announced a huge 10-man elimination match between Impact Wrestling and Bullet Club. It will be Cody, Hangman Page, Marty Skrull, and the Young Bucks versus Johnny Impact, Brian Cage, Sammy Callahan, and LAX. We also have LAX versus the Young Bucks another night, along with Marty Skrull versus Sammy Callahan. So all huge matches, and like I said, hopefully these will be televised or recorded so we can see them at some point um this week impact wrestling didn't do their media teleconference instead they had what they call a press pass podcast and the guests this week were ortiz and homicide um this was really basically them hyping up their match for bound for glory um i, I thought they did a good job with it i enjoyed the uh, back and forth between the two men um, Josh came on first, and he put over the Mexico tapings, the Hall of Fame announcement, and the uh, Las Vegas tapings in November. Um, October 10th, apparently, they're doing a Survivor viewing party with Johnny Impact for um, the week before Bound for Glory. So that is that. And this is when Homicide and Ortiz came on the channel. Um, they were both asked how far they believe Johnny will go on Survivor. Both of them said they do not care. Um, Homicide came on and said that uh, he wants, because they brought up the topic of uh, Little Richie and the whole ceasefire thing, and Homicide wants to know where Little Richie's parents are and why they why he was able to be out partying at midnight, which was pretty funny. And uh, he asked Josh about it, and Josh kind of averted the question a little bit, but he said that Richie is going to make a full recovery, and he uh, asked Homicide if he remembers celebrating late at night as a kid, and Homicide was like, no, I had to be at home at 9 um, Homicide said he had no problems with Santana and Ortiz. His problem lies with Conan. Like I said, most stuff was them plugging for Bound for Glory. Uh, they were asked a question. We've seen Di Diamante in and out of LAX and the connection there. If each of you could expand LAX or the OGs from a female perspective, who would you pick? Homicide said Diamante, but he doesn't know which side she is on. And then he brings up 
Mercedes Martinez saying that she is a legend in the streets. Ortiz says Diamante all the way. And then Josh was asked by Ross what female he would like to have in the broadcast booth with him. And he said not in the booth, but then he brings up Mercedes Martinez, much like Homicide did, and says that he thought she broke Madison Rain's neck in the Mae Young Classic. He says Mercedes is dangerous in the ring, but technically sound, and he would love to have her in an impact ring, which I agree. She would be a great addition. Um, It is interesting, though, to note that the whole reason Madison Rain came back was to be in the broadcast booth for the knockouts matches, and then that was immediately thrown away when she entered in a feud with Tessa and then eventually uh, parted ways with the company, I guess, for the time being, as she signed a deal with the Ring of Honor. Um, they talk about both being very excited for Bound for Glory because it's taking place in New York City uh, because it's home to them. Uh, Ortiz is asked if he thinks that LAX is one of the best tag teams in the world. He says 100%. He talks about all the work they've put in. And then he says, we've got the Young Bucks coming up soon, who a lot of people do consider to be one of the best tag teams in the world on the Chris Jericho cruise. You're going to find out. We are trying to take their spot. We're coming for their spot. And then Homicide is asked the same question. Homicide says he agrees that the OGs are the best in the world. They were the first Latino NWA tag team champions. They beat Hall of Famers like Team 3D, AJ Styles, and Christopher Daniels, to which Ortiz says that he they beat Team 3D and the Hardys in the same night. And Ortiz was and uh, Homicide was like, well, that was never televised, so uh, yeah. Uh, So they are both asked about Conan not wrestling in a while and what they expect him to bring to the table for Bound for Glory. Ortiz says that Conan is a veteran and who knows what he has up his sleeves. He teaches myself and Santana a lot, but he doesn't teach us everything because he is a crafty veteran. And of course, weapons, whatever he can get his hands on because he wants to make King pay for all the stress and anger he has put them through. And then Homicide talks about himself and Hernandez and King beating the crap out of Conan, saying we don't need weapons. All we we are going to do is we're going to hurt the two guys that are the tag team champions for Impact Wrestling, and we're going to teach Conan a lesson. The biggest mistake that Conan made in in his legendary career is sign a contract to be involved with this match. And that was pretty much that. Like I said, this was basically to hype them for the Bound for Glory match, but it was good. Um, Next week, Abyss will be on the press pass, so that will be good to hear from him. Um, Pretty much last I have is a couple things about Scarlett Bordeaux. Uh, Vulture Hound conducted an interview with Scarlett, and they wrote, wrote an article based on the interview titled, I Really Want to Wrestle Everyone. Uh, Just a little quote from it, it's, uh, there's no denying that the knockouts division in Impact Wrestling has some of the finest women's competitors in professional wrestling. There's such diversity amongst the roster, and whether it's their character or their in-ring performances that make them unique, there's always great matches to look forward to. The latest addition to the division is the gorgeous Scarlett Bordeaux, and we recently had the chance to talk to her in Impact Wrestling Media Call, while she certainly turning heads for both good and controversial reasons, There's no denying she can wrestle. If her past track record is anything to go by, we are in for a treat when she finally starts to go after the best that Impact has to offer. So I will leave a link in the comments section below and pin that for you guys to check out. And DailyDDT.com also posted an article titled Scarlet Bordeaux is the star of the show. Um... They'd say, Impact Wrestling has the dominant trio of Austin Aries, Moose, and Killer Cross taking over the main event of the show, but Scarlett Bordeaux is Impact's real star on Thursday nights. So I will leave that link in the comments section below so you guys can check that out. And last, we'll just take a quick look at Um, next week's episode of Impact. It looks to be another good show. So far, they announced Brian Cage versus Jake Crist, the Desi Hit Squad versus LAX in a non-title match. Sue Young and the Undead Maid of Honor versus Ali and Kiera Hogan. Tessa Blanchard versus Fabi Apache in a Knockouts Championship match. That match should be great. And Scarlett Bordeaux's announcement. So, like I said, next week's episode looks to be a good one, or I should say this week's coming up. But uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys this week. I will see you guys on Friday for my Impact Review. 
Thanks for checking out my video, and until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.